your energy forecast for Thursday, May 2nd. Okay, so we have the moon in Aquarius energy coming down off of that peak potency of the last quarter moon that we just reached here yesterday. The moon in Aquarius is going to go void, of course, at 529 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have the moon shifting into Pisces energy at 252 p.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time. So the transition from Aquarius energy to Pisces energy is always felt because we're moving out of the highest form of our intellect, the highest form of our headspace, acting as the observer, really pushing ourselves to project a futuristic vision, futuristic goal. That Aquarius energy allows us to look back in the present moment and in the future to see what it is that we could do better, what it is that we could improve upon, where it is that there's heaviness, weight, obligation, commitment, especially with the old version of self. This is giving us an aha moment, an idea on how we can break free from some of these particular restrictions and actually free ourselves up to start building, creating, bringing to life aspects that are going to fit into our futuristic vision and dream much better than some of the old constructs did. Now, the Pisces energy, of course, is going to throw us all the way into our feels. The Pisces energy is the ending of the zodiac, which means that this is the time to rest, to rejuvenate, to regenerate, to unwind, to wrap up. Not necessarily a time for doing, which is definitely going to be an extreme contrast to Mars, fresh in this Aries energy with ants in his pants. So we're definitely going to feel that shift. We have to wrap things up in the Piscean energy before we jump into a brand new cycle. And of course, we will do that when the moon shifts into Aries energy. Given an extra layer of intensity here today is Pluto, the great transformer himself, who is going retrograde at two degrees in Aquarius energy. So of course, if you haven't listened to May's energy forecast as of yet, I'm going to recommend you do that. There's an astro forecast out there for Pluto going retrograde. Take a listen to that. Of course, download your zodiac forecast for the month of May and understand where all of these energy shifts are going to be impacting your life First and foremost, we got to stay ahead of the energies. So Pluto going retrograde is definitely going to be a major shift. The days pre these events and post these events are going to be the most difficult, the most intense, the most jittery, the most disruption. And then we're going to see those particular storylines kind of settle out. With all of that being said, there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. 10 of them are going to involve the moon. So the moon, while still very much in this Aquarius energy, is going to make a positive interaction with Venus. So Venus is the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in her rulership and Taurus energy, becoming very present, very much in the moment, very connected and in touch with her body, with her physical senses. We are very much trying to ground and anchor into this present moment. We're having the attitude of gratitude. We are focusing in on the smaller details of our lives that bring us a sense of happiness and joy and pleasure, safety, security, and stability. And of course, the moon interacting with Venus in this way is definitely going to illuminate where it is that we're having some aha moments on what we absolutely have to change. Change in our physical realms, change in our routines, our relationships, our money matters, in order to provide us with, again, maximum levels of happiness, joy, safety, security, stability. Because that Aquarius energy is very visionary, we are definitely starting to see the bigger, broader picture kind of unfold before us. And with that, we're starting to understand the gap, the distance between the present moment and where it is that we would like to see ourselves. And now we're going through the reevaluation the processing, if you will, of who and what needs to stay and who and what needs to go. The moon then gets into the boxing ring, squares off with first Uranus and then Jupiter, which is definitely going to add some tension, some conflict, some growing pains as we kind of wrap up this lunar cycle and we prepare to move into that Piscean energy. So the moon squaring off with Uranus and again, Uranus rules over the Aquarius energy that the moon is in. Uranus is in Taurus energy. And so because this is a square, there is a lot more confusion than there is clarity. 
There is a lot more, let's call it uncertainty than there are certainties. And we are starting to kind of pick apart to dissect where it is that we're feeling trapped, where it is that we're feeling heavy, where it is that we're feeling weighted and confused in order for us to, again, sit in this tension and conflict and hope for an epiphany, hope for an aha moment that will not only change our mood and our attitude, but will download us with a vision, a goal, a dream on how it is that we're going to resolve some of the issues that we're kind of confused about. Now, getting into the boxing ring and squaring off with Jupiter, the planet of growth and expansion, who was also in this Taurus energy, is going to create friction. Again, we're feeding off of not having the amount of clarity in which we would like, not being reassured in the way that we would like. We're sitting in confusion. And Jupiter, who brings growth and opportunity, suddenly we're very close-minded with what it is that we actually have available to us. Right now, we're sitting in this tension point. We're sitting in this cluster F of emotion because we're having a hard time seeing the forest past the trees. Even though the Aquarius energy is very visionary and we're trying to piece together the goal, the vision, the dream that we want to be actually moving towards, our physical realms really don't support an avenue, an exit point, a path, a direction to actually get from point A to point B. So instead, we're kind of confused. We're cluster F. We're not feeling as optimistic, as confident as we may have over the last couple of days. Instead of seeing the options and opportunity for growth and expansion in our physical realm, especially where love and relationships and money matters are concerned, we're kind of sitting in the funk. And again, we have to sit in the funk. We have to sit in that darkness in order to get gain perspective in the light. So 529 AM Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to go void, of course. Things get shaky, things get uncertain, things get unstable. And at 922 AM, that is when Pluto, the great transformer himself, goes retrograde. So if you've downloaded your Taurus season e-guide, please, please flip to this particular section in your workbook. Really capture the frustration, the power struggles, the irritation, the intensities that you're currently experiencing and focused on. This is the storyline that we are going to be working with, empowering ourselves over the next five months. While the moon is still void, of course, in this Aquarius energy, we're also going to have a beautiful interaction prior to locking into this Pisces energy with Neptune. Neptune, of course, in Pisces energy, in his rulership, this is definitely going to download us with a vision, with a little bit of insight, with a little bit of clarity on where it is that our higher selves, our heart and soul space is asking us to pursue a new vision, new goal, new dream. Now, again, reminder, the Aquarius energy is intellectual. The Pisces energy is intuitive. And so we're tapping into new ideas, new creative ideas, new imaginative ideas on what that goal, that vision, that dream should be according to our higher selves. And again, the moon in Aquarius energy is going to apply as much logic as a much practicality to bringing forth a path, a plan, a strategy on how it is that we're going to take action on bringing some of these goals, these visions, these dreams to life. So 2.52 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon shifts into Pisces energy. About a half hour later, we have the moon in Pisces making a semi-square, little bit of tension and conflict with the North Node in Aries energy. That North Node is trying to get us on the right path, on the solo quest, the solo adventure, in order for us to get to know ourselves very well, to boss up into our authentic frequency and vibration, to kind of go on a little bit of an adventure, a quest, a mission, on reaching certain goals that are going to help evolve our soul self. And so this particular interaction definitely is going to create that tension, which it should, because the North Node is wanting us to think about the future, how we're going to move forward, while the Moon in Pisces is illuminating what it is that we have to wrap up, what we have to bring an ending and a closure to before we can get started on this path, on this quest, on this adventure. The moon in Pisces is then going to make a very positive interaction with the sun, of course, in Taurus energy. The sun in Taurus is again shining a bright light on our physical realm, on the present moment, on the here and now, 
on this slower pace that we need to kind of settle into in order to understand what it is that we need to build, create, bring to life in order to support our long-term visions, our long-term dreams. Now, I actually love Pisces and Taurus energy working together because Pisces energy is very mystical, very creative, very imaginative, very intuitive. And when we kind of have these ideas, this vision, if you will, we're able to bring it into form through the Taurus energy. That's the physical form. That's materialization. And so anytime that we have the moon and the sun coming together in any kind of interaction, this is an aha moment. This is an epiphany. We're going to have a new awareness on where it is, emotionally speaking, we're being called to pursue something new, something different, something that is going to be around for the long term. But of course, the moon in Pisces, again, needs us to wrap things up before we're going to be able to focus on what needs to be built, what needs to be created for our futuristic selves. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mars. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. He's fresh in his rulership here in this Aries energy, kicking off a brand new two-year cycle. He has ants in his pants. He really wants to take action and make moves. But again, with the moon and Pisces energy, this is about really wrapping up cycles before we're free and clear to jump into brand new ones. However, this is a positive interaction, which means that intuitively speaking, because again, Mars just spent a fair amount of time in this Pisces energy trying to get emotionally, intuitively, spiritually in alignment with a new path, with a new quest, with a new mission, with a new meaning, with a new purpose in order for us to pursue this brand new two year chapter. And so the moon interacting with Mars is kind of reminding us what it is that we are inspired to pursue, what it is that we are motivated and determined to actually see through. Yes, we want to take action and make moves, but again, cultivating the inner energy to see our vision through is the name of the game at this particular point in time. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto. Pluto just went retrograde. We're going to need some time to kind of acclimate to this particular energy, to this particular intensity. However, there's a lot going on in our inner realm. We could become a little bit overwhelmed with all of the downloads that are now popping off, connecting the dots, making a whole lot of sense. Again, Pluto takes us on an inner realm journey of really experiencing where it is that the power struggles are still alive and well, where it is that we could be doing better, what it is that we have to improve on, especially to boss up in our lives. And so the moon kind of interacting with Pluto is definitely putting us in a more sensitive type of situation. We're hypersensitive, especially to the energies going on around us. Again, Pluto brings this intensity that is really hard to kind of break free from. But this is a positive interaction, which means that the intensity is likely going to be felt in our intuition, in the insights, the visions that are now popping off inside of us, making a lot more sense than they have in the days gone by. The moon is then going to semi-square Mercury. Mercury, of course, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury, yes, is direct, but still in his post-retrograde shadow period in this Aries energy, which is a fire starter. This is us just rapidly trying to process the thoughts, the ideas that we're having, the impulses, the urgencies that we're having. This is us trying to think futuristically moving forward. Well, the moon in Pisces, again, needs us to wrap up some aspects and elements from the past. So this is the friction. This is our heart and our head not on the same page. Our head space is thinking futuristically. Our heart space is thinking in the past. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Pisces energy, sextiling, beautiful interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Taurus energy. So similarly to the sun in Taurus, Venus in Taurus has kind of given us the same vibes working with this Pisces energy. But because Venus is involved, we're having insights, we're having visions, downloads, if you will, 
on what we need to do in our physical realms to be happier, to be healthier, to feel safer and secure, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. And although finances are a part of Venus's focus as well, we are gaining a little bit of perspective on what we could be doing differently to improve our financial situation as well. But this is an aha moment. This is an epiphany, a realization in that heart space on what we need to do, what we need to pursue, what we need to grow, what we need to kind of focus our energy on as far as stabilizing our physical realm, our present moment, and really having that attitude of gratitude for all that is working, all that is going right, instead of focused on all the things that aren't going so well and definitely needing some improvements.